Glory to God. We greet everyone of the peace of the Lord Jesus. Amen. In reverence to the Word of God, we're going to stand up at this moment. We're going to read Isaiah. Chapter 65, verse 1, verse 9, verse 1, 9 and 10. Isaiah 65, 1, 9 and 10. This has the word of God. I, I was sought by those who did not ask for me. I was found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a name that was not called by my name. Now verse 9. I will bring uh, forth descendants from Jacob and from Judah on her hair of my mountains. My elect shall inherit it, and my servants shall dwell there. Sharon shall be a, a fold of flocks, and the valley of Acre a place for the herds to lie down for my people who have sought me. Lord, we ask that you bless us and, and uh, thank you for allowing us to be in your sanctuary. We ask that through your word you may continue to bless your people, we pray in the holy name of Jesus, amen. The brethren may be seated. Jesus throughout his ministry, he was had already a flock of sheep he had his disciples, he had their people that followed him. But at a certain moment, he says the following. Still, there are sheep that are not in this shelter, but it's my will to gather them. So the Lord makes a promise that sheep were going to gather to his flock, to his shelter. And he he will provide, he would provide so that these sheep would be gathered or that they would be in his shelter. And as we read these verses from the Word of God, the Lord was also speaking of a promise, of a promise, of a prophecy. And the prophecy was that people people, nation that did not ask for the Lord and did not seek the Lord, the, he would reveal himself to them, to this nation and to those people. That's what it says the following. I was going to seek the ones who are not asking for me and was found by the ones who did not seek me. The people who was not called by name, I said, here I am. We are reading the book of Songs of Solomon, and the book of Songs of Solomon speaks of a, a search. This woman, the young lady, the youth, the bride, which is the church, she said, at night I saw the Lord in my bed, the ones who loves my soul. I sought him, but I was not able to find him. I will get up and go around the city, and I will seek through the streets and the squares. And the Bible says that she went and she sought, but was not able to find him. But this is, the, those verses, they are related also through to a prophecy. The prophecy, which is also in the book of Isaiah, that says the following, will not fight, will not call, plea, 
or anyone will hear by the streets, they will hear your voice. It was speaking about the Lord Jesus. So looking for Jesus on the streets, on the public square, she's not going to find because there, there, there was a prophecy already in Isaiah regarding this, saying that there was no people crying out or argument. And no one was going to hear his voice on the streets and of his name the Gentiles will wait for. So everything is related to a prophecy. Everything is related to plans and projects that the Lord has, God has for the life of man. You know, we always sing a song, and I always mention this song, and this wonderful night in this, in this holy place, I scheduled a meeting, with, a meeting with God. I did not schedule a meeting with God, but the Lord, He scheduled a meeting with me. When you take Paul in the New Testament, now ask the brethren that know a little bit of the story of Paul. Paul was seeking the Lord, yes or no? His name was Saul by then. Paul was not seeking the Lord. He was persecuting the church in order to destroy the church. But he was not seeking Jesus. But he had a meeting with Jesus. Why did he have a meeting with Jesus? Because Jesus revealed himself to him. Got him to know him. Spoke to him. Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And did he know Jesus? Or did he know the Lord? Yes or no? No. Who, who are you, Lord? He didn't know who the Lord was. He had a religion, of course. He had a wonderful one. He was Jewish. He was raised uh, by the feet of Gamaliel. He attended the best university that existed, which was the school of Jerusalem. The Bible says that according to the law, Paul was unreproachable. But he was seeking. He was seeking something for his life. And how many of us, we may not even know what it is, but we know that there is something missing. Uh, once a youth wanted to serve the Lord, but at that moment he did not discern that was something missing. I have no material goods, my life is wonderful. And Jesus says, there is something lacking on you. What was missing for that youth? was necessary for that youth to follow Jesus. And the text says the following, I was, I was sick to ones who do not ask for me. Sometimes men do not ask for the Lord. He does not ask who the Lord is, where the Lord is, where does he inhabit. In what place? In what place will he be found? There, will, nobody was at any ulterior motive. Nobody wanted to seek an information, but he was seeking something for his life. And here is the t the detail. God knows what man is looking for. There's a song of a servant from God. Do you know that song? I will seek him and I will find him. You can continue playing only on the keyboard. You can continue playing on that playing that one. So sometimes people they seek something to answer to one of their needs. And they, they don't even know what it is. There's a psalm that says, My soul thirsts for God. But many times a person does not realize that this thirst is something that is missing, this emptiness in, in their lives. Is the need of knowing the Lord, of having a meeting with the Lord. 
uh, sought the ones who were not asking for me? How many people have been able to re be reached by the Lord without ever having asked for the Lord? The word says, I was found. When you seek, you seek something that you had, but you no longer have. You lost. Remember the, the woman that had three coins. She lost a silver coin. And what happened? She went there to recover what he, she had lost. And we, men, we were formed. We received something from God, which is the breath of life, life itself. And man can lose this. You know, you know that we don't have life. We have a breath of life. Why is that? Because life, life, life is Jesus. It is written. I am the way, the truth, and the life. If I had life, I would never die. No one would die. So then when God creates man, he breathes the breath of life on the nostrils of man. The Bible s says this. And man became a living soul. That's why we all die. We will all die. We are going to get out of this place one way or another, through either through death or through the rapture. So this absence of God, this particle of God, when we we sin and we all we have been destitute from the glory of God, and the soul tries to recover this, tries to recover its place in eternity. Because we came from God, and the Bible says that surely we're going to return to that. The dust will return to dust, and the spirit return to God, to God who gave it. So our lives, there is incessant search, seeking again once what we once once uh, we lost, which was the condition of being in the presence of God. So man as we as men, we don't know this. So we look for something to fill our emptiness. We don't know what it is, but it is actually this absence of God in our lives. So I was sought by someone that did not ask for me. I knew what it was, but was I didn't know what it was, but I went out seeking for something that would fill my life, bring uh, joy, comfort and refreshing to my heart but I was found when Jesus said he speaks about the parables Jesus said that the man found on the field a great treasure then he went a great a pearl of great worth so why did he find because God revealed it to him that's why this verse says the following I was found by the ones that did not seek me, the people that was not called by my name. He, I said, here I am. So the Lord comes and he reveals himself to man. And here it demonstrates the great love of God towards our lives. Once, even one disciple of Jesus, Jesus said, I was going to eternity. And then he asked, Lord, we don't know the way. Then we hear this famous verse, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So the Lord, He demonstrates His love exactly on those details. If today you are here in the presence of God, if one day we felt an emptiness in your life, you didn't know what it was, from the day you were seeking something to fill that emptiness in your soul, in your heart. The Lord is telling you, my brother and sister, here I am. So the Lord is here. What you were seeking, what you did not ask, what you did not know, what you had no knowledge of, Tonight, the Lord wants to reveal to our life <coughs> and demonstrate this great love that the Lord has 
<coughs> towards a man's life. So when he mentions his ministry, people did not know who Jesus was. So then a man called John the Baptist says, Here is the Lamb of God, the one who takes the sins from the world. There were two men there to heard this conversation, Peter and Andrew. And what did they do? He went out to seek the Lord. And they went to the Lord Jesus and they just turned to them and said, who, who, What are you seeking? Rabbi, Ma and they answered, Rabbi, Master, where do you live? We are seeking your house. You, we seek your inhabitants. We want to reside. We want to live. I want to know your address so that I, I can seek you every time that I, w that I need. And the Bible says that I, on that day, he brought those men and those men stay, stayed with him. And this is the desire of the Lord to make us know his knowledge, his desire, his project and guide us to him. Once the disciples of Jesus came to Jesus, Jesus had just performed a couple of miracles. He operated on the life of the mother-in-law of Peter. And people gathered in, on the house of Peter, and there was a meeting there. And he healed many and delivered many. And then Jesus went away to, to pray. He went to the desert. And on that day, something interesting happened. The disciples came to Jesus and said, Look, everyone is seeking you. So there came a moment in which every person was seeking the Lord, were seeking the Lord. We are living in a world in a moment we are in which we are all seeking the Lord. But they do not know that the Lord is is the one that they are seeking. We are living in a moment in which everyone that everyone is seeking the Lord but they will only find if God reveals himself to their lives. So the word says the following, Here I am. The Lord is present. He is here whatever you were seeking, whatever you did not ask, the absence that you felt, the Lord is here. When he says, here I am, he's saying that he, he is with you. That he is Emmanuel. He is God with us. So my brother and sister, you who are seeking something for your life, he is here. He is in you. There's a song that speaks about it. The Holy Spirit is, I want you to give worth to what you have, your servant, your, your servant is so important for God. It's a, don't cry and be anguished in your interior, saying sometimes that you are nobody. I come to speak about the worth that you have because the Holy Spirit is in you. One is Jesus. He just said, here I am. He's saying, I'm present in your life. But you have not discovered this yet. From your birth. Even before you were gen generated in the womb of your mother, the Bible says it. the Lord Jesus already knew you. There was a plan, a project for your life. You never sought him, but he was present. Remember the formation of man. The, he has always been present. God has always been present. But sometimes man does not realize this. Here I am. And the Lord says, I will produce descendants in Jacob. And who Jacob is? Jacob was not the firstborn. Jacob was not the chosen one. The Bible said that two brothers were born. Esau was, it was supposed to be Abraham, Esau, and then the firstborn of Esau, but it became Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Why Jacob? Because Jacob 
had no right to the blessing of first being the firstborn. We have no right to anything. But the Lord gave us this right through the cross of Calvary. The Lord Jesus says the following. First John says the following. And gave him the power to be children of God to the ones who believe in his name. So Jacob was by faith that the descendants of Abraham were, was going to be generated through the descendants of Jacob. Jacob was, was a deceiver. He had no right, but the Lord gave him the right. We have received this, this right to be called the children of God. And this is the manifestation of the love and the mercy of God. And to help a, a heir. It is speaking about Jesus. The heir, the heir from God, the, ch the Son of God, the Savior of the world. So that you may possess my mountain, my blessings. My elected will inherit the earth, the eternity. And my children will inhabit there. That's why servant John, when he saw a new heaven and a new earth, because the first heaven and the first earth had passed and the sea did no, no longer exist. So I saw the new holiness, new Jerusalem. He speaks about this inheritance, heavenly inheritance the Lord has prepared for our lives through Christ Jesus and Sharon. He is, has spoken about Sharon in the book of Songs of Solomon. The roses of Sharon, the lily of the valleys, they serve as a shelter for for sheep. There, there is still sheep that is not, there are not in my pasture, but I, it is my will to gather them to my people that sought me. There is a promise from God for my life, for your life, for our lives. The Lord was showing tonight a person that is here with us, a sister, and the gift said that she came from the sea. When we speak about the sea, everybody already understood. The sea was furious, and she entered here in the church, and she asked herself, what am I doing here in the church? Then a man came and picked her up, and placed her together with the church. And she did not understand it, but she felt good about it, because those people, she understood why those people accepted her. They were concerned with her. So then the man would tell this woman that she would also begin to be concerned with other people, because this is was a demonstration of the love of God towards her life. The Lord is showing someone that came from the world. Who from us did not come from the world? All of us. But the sea in fury, that's how the world is. It's furious. The waves, master, the sea, the sea is, is revolts. Those are, that's what they happen in the world. The nations, uh, uh, in every place is confusion. In Brazil, in America, the sea is, in, is turbulent and it's coming to destroy everything. And this woman is being rescued at this moment. And Pastor Jedochi, we have studied, he speaks about the moment of the wild doves, uh, the doves that, that fly on the on the mountain the lord is rescuing lives rescuing lives rescuing lives the word of the lord is not there only because the word of the lord was proclaimed for the four corners of the earth and this is a sign but the sign you know what it is is when the number of saved are fulfilled is there in revelations no one knows the number but the lord he He has there the quantity of people that are going to participate. When it reaches that quantity, the church, then it's going to go up. So the Lord is showing this. This moment where people are coming, they did not hear, hear the voice of God, did not receive the invitation, but they are coming. Why is that? 
because the Lord God is coming. The Holy Spirit is putting this desire in their heart so that people may come up into the presence of God and know the Lord. And the Lord is present to say, Here I am. Right? I'm here to help you, to rescue, to put you on my shelter so that you can participate on my flock and to be able to inherit my eternity. Because this is the promise that Jesus gave to us, eternal life. Amen. Let's hear a song of praise. Yes. 
A igreja vai se colocar de pé. Amen. The church will stand up. Aleluia. Lord, we praise you. We thank you. We're thankful for the manifestation of your love, your of power, and your mercy towards our lives. For your sweet presence in this place. We praise you because one day you revealed yourself to our lives. Have shown, Lord, your plan and your project. We praise you, Lord. We thank you. We ask, Lord, Father, take your people at home under your protection, protecting them, delivering them from any evil, giving them a life and peace in your presence. We serve your service and praise so uh, that we offer you in the holy name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our, our good and eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit may be with the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The brethren may be seated. You can put there the video. special event. Here you will understand the prophetic meaning of all the things that are happening in the world today. The signs, the warnings, the judgments. Come and join us with your family on Sunday, November 6th at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time at the Maranatha Christian Church near you. For more information and the locations of our churches, please visit us at maranathaofamerica.org. Maranatha, the Lord Jesus will come. So tomorrow, 8.30 in the morning. So now, there's another information. So, the two plays. Tomorrow, on Sunday school, it's going to happen at 8.30 in the morning. Okay, only tomorrow, 8.30 in the morning, our clock is going to go back like the 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 clock of Ahab of Acas. So the difference between Brazil and here is going to be of two hours. That's why tomorrow is going to be 8:30. Otherwise, it would have been 9:30, right? Two hours. 8:30, oh, 9:30, 10:30. Of course, 9:30. So tomorrow, 8:30 in the morning. This event. Is the second one, trumpets and feast. We have another one a while ago. Now you're going to have another one. It's going to be transmitted in English, Portuguese, Spanish, Russian, French, German, Italian, in Arab, in Japanese, and in Chinese, in Mandarin Chinese. So we have a relative from uh, any nation that speak these languages. We have a link here. Just send, and whatever they are. They may be able to watch it. So, spe especially our uh, our uh, our uh, fast is going to finish at 7:30 in the morning. So, from midnight at 7:30 in the morning, if the brother desires, is going to 5:30 in the uh, five. Oh, uh, of the afternoon uh, until the end of the service. So 7.30 we're free, we can, 8, 8.30 we're going to be together, participate on this event. Trumpets and Feasts are going to be, take place in a manner of uh, Domingo Martins. So you, if you are here with us, you are invited to participate. Tomorrow the church will be open at 8.30 in the morning. We're going to participate on this event. It's going to be a, an honor to have your presence here in this place. If you desire prayer for our life, a clarification regarding the spiritual gift of what was transmitted, a prayer, raise your hand, and we're going to give you the proper assistance. 